Mr. Zuckerberg, I know you're taking lots of heat for your harvesting of user data, but believe me, it is invaluable for our planned invasion of Earth. Deep learning has given us such an accurate model of human behavior, we're confident that our social media bots can convince human beings how cool it is to submit to our agenda without firing a single laser beam. And welcome to another Data Lit tutorial. This is Colin Scow. This week is all about taking machine learning to massive enterprise scales like Facebook, Google, and Twitter. But chances are, if you're using any kind of cloud service, you are rightfully concerned about the privacy of your data. Let's look at something as simple as a mobile keyboard app. The better the app can predict what you're trying to type, the more productive you are and the more useful the app will be to you. How does a keyboard app guess what you're trying to type? Well, it needs to be trained on what you started typing versus what you actually wrote. The trouble is, I doubt you'd be comfortable sending everything you type to a tech giant central server and trusting them to safeguard that data on your behalf. You want intelligent algorithms that can serve you, make useful recommendations, and predict your intentions so you can be more productive. But you don't want sensitive data leaving your device. Recent research out of Google has figured out how to achieve exactly that while ensuring your data never leaves your device in addition to a plethora of super obsessive safeguards to avoid any possibility of reverse engineering your data or associating it with you. It's called federated learning. In a traditional deep learning setup, your device would send training data to a server, which would then aggregate it to a large training set and your data contribution would make its way into random training batches, and the model would then get updated with stochastic gradient descent. With federated learning, your device downloads the latest version of the model, trains the model locally using your data, and sends the weight updates back to a central server where they are averaged with the weight updates submitted by hundreds or thousands of other users before being back propagated into the master model. Before we go too deep into federated learning, let's look at how distributed learning works in general. Even if there are no privacy concerns and you control all your training data, there comes a point where training on a single machine is no longer practical. Running deep learning efficiently at scale is actually a discipline of its own. The easiest way to start scaling is to simply train with multiple GPUs. You can simply use a larger batch size and split batches among each GPU. You then concatenate the losses from each GPU's mini batches and average them. A single GPU then computes gradients from the combined losses and runs the optimizer to update the weights of the master network. The latest weights are then copied to each GPU for the next training cycle. In PyTorch, this is very simple. Let's look at some basic code from the docs. Here we've just got a standard model with a fully connected layer. Notice every forward pass, we're going to print some information to see what's going on. The input size is 5, the output size is 2, and the dummy data is in batches of 30. If we detect multiple GPUs, all we need to do is wrap the model with a model called nn.dataparallel. This will automatically spit batches evenly across all available devices. Now we just run the input through the model as normal to get the output which has been conveniently recombined from each GPU. Now let's take a quick look at what's going on under the hood. PyTorch copies the model to each available device with the replicate function. The batches are split up evenly across a number of devices with the scatter function. Inputs are fed into each device in parallel through the parallel apply function. Finally, outputs from each device are recombined using the gather function. This is a very easy way of doing things, but we run into a serious bottleneck. As computing the gradients, backpropagation is the slowest part of the entire process. So for true distributed training, you would not only split up the data between nodes, and each node will not only feed the trading data forward through the network and calculate the loss against the expected output, but it will also run backpropagation and compute gradients. This leaves the master node with the light work of simply averaging all the submitted gradients to update the master weights. The best part is that nodes don't even need to be on the same machine or even geographically close to each other. Both PyTorch and TensorFlow have built-in solutions to implement distributed training. Let's look at how it works at a high level. 
You'll need one master parameter server and any number of worker nodes. You'll need a communication protocol and messaging queue to pass data back and forth. PyTorch and TensorFlow each have their own implementations of this. First, send the initial model weights to each worker. Then, divide a large batch of training data up among the workers. Workers then calculate the loss, backpropagate, and then export the gradients from each training step. To improve efficiency, workers can even run several training steps accumulating the gradients from each step. When training is complete, workers send learned gradients back to the master parameter server, which averages them and updates the weights using the selected optimizer algorithm, such as Atom, RMS prop, etc. Finally, the parameter server syncs the latest weights to all the workers at a regular interval, and the training loop continues. Now that we understand distributed training, let's now dive a bit deeper into the specialized problems of federated learning. In light of what we just learned, this means using end-user devices such as cell phones as workers, which train on local data from the device. There are many algorithmic and technical challenges to making this work smoothly. For example, stochastic gradient descent requires low latency, high throughput connections to the training data, but most mobile devices have high latency, low bandwidth connections and are only intermittently available for training. To avoid impacting users negatively, the device must be idle, plugged in, and on a free wireless connection before training can occur. In addition, user data tends to be unbalanced. It's not IID or independent, identically distributed. A single user's data is generally not representative of the population distribution. In addition, some users use the app much more than others, leading to varying amounts of local training data. To overcome these limitations, Google has developed a federated averaging algorithm, which can train deep networks using 10 to 100 times less communication compared to classic distributed training. The key is using the processing power and modern mobile devices to generate higher quality updates than simple gradient steps. This means the quantity of updates can be reduced. Here's an overview of how it works. At the beginning of each training round, a random fraction C of available clients is selected. The server then sends the current model parameters to the chosen clients. Each client trains on its local data set and sends an update, new weights to the server. Each client trains for E epochs using mini batch size B and learning rate eta. The server then averages the new weights from all participating clients and the process repeats. We use a weighted average based on the number of training examples each client possesses. Google has several other tricks up its sleeve to improve both the efficiency and privacy guarantees of the process. As upload speeds on household internet connections are often much slower than download speeds, Google has also developed a novel algorithm to compress updates up to 100 times using quantization and random rotations. In other words, we can significantly reduce the precision of the model's weights without compromising accuracy. Next comes the obsession with respecting the privacy of the user's data, which I would say is a very refreshing thing to hear from a tech giant in the age of Big Brother. Google has developed what is called the Secure Aggregation Protocol, which encrypts updates on each device before they are sent. The updates are literally averaged in their encrypted state and the server can then only decrypt the average update if hundreds or thousands of users have participated. And completely independent of Google's work, an organization called OpenMind has created a Python library called PySift, which works together with PyTorch to provide both federated learning together with built-in privacy obsessive encryption. Their goal is to allow anyone who does machine learning to also implement privacy-preserving tools with very little effort. With PySift, a standard deep learning model can be transformed into a distributed federating learning model with just 10 lines of additional code. First, we hook PySift into PyTorch. Then define your workers. Next, define a federated data set and split it among your workers. Inside the training loop, send the latest model to your workers then perform gradient descent as usual and get the new model back on the master server. PySIF's example code is very well documented. TensorFlow, what Google uses in production, also has some excellent tutorials as well. I'll leave links in the description and encourage you to go through them. What you've learned in this video should be enough background knowledge to understand what is going on. 
All right, this is Colin Scow, and I'll be back next week with another cutting-edge data science tutorial. Meanwhile, don't forget to like and subscribe and make that data lit.